and join us and connect with us every Sunday morning, uh, Tuesday evening, and many of the evenings that we have special little things for you to connect with to One Body Ministry. I also want to take this time to thank all of you have been, who have continued your giving, uh, not only with your finances, but your support, your words of encouragement. You have sent us texts. You've given us a phone call. I just want to thank you for the blessing of family. We have family here in the, the church. We're one body all over. I've been getting messages from people from the States and other people that I have met over a course of a lifetime. And I do, I do know that we're all making choices right now to believe that God is going to do what he says he's going to do. He's going to keep us. He's going to lift us up. He is going to be true and faithful because he's God. And today we want to start off with, you know, just the, the, the end message that we've been going through uh, our series. And this is part five, and it's called Unshakable Identity. And I can't really get away from what we're going through. And, and, you know, using this title, people might think, well, what does that have to do with what we're going through? And how can that help me practically? Well, actually, identity, our identity in Christ is about belief. It is about knowing who we are, what has been spoken over us. And so far, we have learned the wonderful truths that we have been chosen, we've been purchased, we've been adopted in God's family, that it's a position of privilege, that this identity of us being called out children of God is that we were given great power and every spiritual blessing. So if we really understood this, if we really believed that, then going through the crisis would give us a different perspective. And so it really comes back down down to knowing that God doesn't want his sons and daughters t- uh, to walk in fear and in doubt. He wants us to be free to walk without any of this anxiety that is so consuming so many today. And so I want to start off with Romans 5.1, which says, therefore, having been justified, we have peace with God. Well, we know we have external peace and internal peace. This is the internal peace that comes because we say yes to Christ. God is interested in speaking directly to you and I about our fear, our doubts, and our insecurities. Because when we are justified by God, when we are made right with God, that means we're capable of having that relationship through the Son by faith, then we can stand in this place of peace, which is an internal peace, which affects our external peace. We run after a whole lot of things to keep control of our life. But beloved, we have no control. We have no control over this virus, what's going to go on. We do have control of how we're going to respond. And that's where faith comes into play. Now, when we continue to read a little further in Romans 5, we see that it gets better. Paul, the author of Romans 5, says that not only do you have peace, but that your faith, because of your faith in Jesus, but that you can stand in grace. Now, this is pivotal. Grace is unmerited. It's undeserved. It's all given to us because of Jesus, but we can stand in a place of enablement and empowerment. Who doesn't want this? Who doesn't want to be able to move through this crisis, to navigate through the darkness? and the uncertainty with a sense of peace and grace. All of us would say it. Now, we know that grace isn't something that we should take lightly as believers, but I truly believe we do. See, grace, I love this quote. I saw it. I want to put it up here for you. It says, grace is a house where you live. It's a suit that you wear. It's an ocean that you sink in. God's grace is ever-present and ever-living, ever ready to be poured out and given upon giving. Now, we, when we understand the amount of grace that is upon us because we were permitted to enter into the, to, to the, to the Holy of Holies because of Jesus, when we understand that, then we know when Jesus says that you are in the palm of his Father's hand and nothing can take you out of, that means that you won't be as shaken or greatly moved as everyone else who doesn't have this hope. And my prayer for you today is that as you listen, you will get the understanding of where you're dwelling. 
all of us are dwelling or continuing in something today. And I've been challenged every day to go back to dwell to truth. What do I believe about God? What do I believe about what Jesus did for me? What he says about me, my identity, who I am, how he sees me, and what the Holy Spirit can do through me if I allow him to. And this is all because of truth. That's why John 8, 32 says, if you know the truth, the truth will make you free. Many of us are not free today. But I'm here to tell you that our God is a promise-making, promise-keeping kind of God. He is true and faithful. He doesn't break his promises. They're yea and amen. It's an impossibility. When God has spoken something, he cannot go against it. When he sends his word, the word cannot come back to us. Boy, that means... It's going to do something. The truth about God, that he, what he offers to us, should give us security. It should give us an assurance and a confidence just to get up today and move forward and do what we have to do and get up tomorrow. We know that hope in this time of need is very important. God gives us the authority to speak truth into our circumstances, to our hearts, and reminding us that we are under a God that is remarkable, true, and faithful. He is one who has never and will never fail us or abandon us. And so when we understand this identity, this unshakable identity, this belief that's based on how God sees us, what Jesus has spoken over us, and when we know these truths, then we don't stay in the shadows of distortion. We don't stay in the shadow of fear. But many of us, instead of walking in these truths, we live and dwell with the uncertainties of the days that we live in. We live and dwell of the unknowns of tomorrow. We live and dwell in the fear, causing us to be greatly moved and shaken despite being told by God through his son and having the Holy Spirit reaff reaffirming that because he indwells us. Despite all that, we are actually being greatly moved by our days, by our situation. So there is a truth to be had today. I was going through this, and this morning I, I had to uh, change my message, and I, I was okay with that. God had something that he wanted to say, and it wasn't what I put on a piece of paper, so I was good to go. But there was a truth that kept on pulling out, and this is what I want to bring to you, and it will actually bring it back to why we are talking about unshakable identity. It's about belief. It's about where are you dwelling with your belief? Where are you going with your truths? Whose truths are you listening to, your own or the one that comes from the word of God? Psalm 91.1 says this, he who dwells, there's that word again, in the shelter of the most high will rest in the shadow of the almighty. The word dwell means this, to live in to continue in. It's a given condition or state. That means it's not something that changes every day. It is something that is solid. It's a sure foundation. To dwell is to, it's to be in a particular point, residing in a particular place. Now, the word rest means to relax into something. I love the word relax because many of us are not relaxed today. We need to relax in something other than our snack food, other than our TV shows. We need to relax in something a whole lot less movable than those things. And so here he says we need to relax and let us rest, uh, be supported. Let it support us. So the truth of what we're saying here, so he says, when you dwell under the shelter of the Most High, who he is, what he says, what God has done for us in the behalf of humanity, because he loved us so much, he sent his son, what his son says about us, and what the Holy Spirit can do through us, giving us all that we need to get through this. When we actually dwell on those truths, this is what happens in Psalm 91 2. He says, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in whom I trust. Now, trust means that you're relying on something other than what are the tangibles in your life. He says, when I know that I'm dwelling under the shadow of the Almighty, when I've gone to him and I'm continuing and I'm supported by that truth, then I find refuge and fortress. 
So the question you need to ask yourself, what is your, for, your fortress today? You see, when the truth is in, in Psalm 91 is that when we make God what he says and all that he has done for us through his son, our dwelling place, we become a people, a person, not susceptible to outside influence or disturbance. That's the definition of fortress. We think it's a big fortress, big, you know, big walls, but Ultimately, when we are actually dwelling in truth, what God is saying, it becomes a fortress that sustains us in all of what we're going through. Now, I love this definition of fortress, a person not susceptible to outside influence or disturbance. When we dwell and rest on the truth of our new identity, we're chosen, qualified, loved, warmly, warmly welcome, adopted. We are alive. We're free. Oh, my goodness. We are secure. When we know this, then we find a refuge. A refuge is a shelter that keeps us from trouble and from danger. Now, we know that this is not physical danger troubles. We are experiencing all of that now with the physical distancing and we're, we're asked and recommended not to do this because there is real danger of that because of the spreading of the virus. But what I'm talking about is spiritual truths that actually are the inward things that keeps us from being greatly moved with anxiety and fear. I know that I have to actually remind myself in the God that I follow every day. I have to be reminded that I'm forgiven, that I'm secure, that I'm justified, that I am well-loved and well-covered. I am reminded every day that no matter how deep and wide the storm looks out there, how big the waves are, I can stand in the place of grace. Now, we know that we have to ask ourselves every day, where are you dwelling? Where are your thoughts? Are you mindful in what you, are, what you are embracing? What are you continuing in? Is it the anxiety, the stress? The, are you overwhelmed? What are you resting into? What is supporting you at this particular moment? What have you put your confidence in to get through this particular crisis? We have said it over and over again in the last five weeks. No one and nothing can take away our God-given ad identity, but it is up to us to either accept it or reject it, either believe it or not believe it, either to dwell and continue it or not. The resting in it will support us through this crisis. And I truly believe that the truth that God keeps his promise is right before us. I don't know about you, but I got up today, and I was able to walk. I was able to hear, smell, taste, feel. I'm alive. I'm well. I am blessed. I have a covering over me. I have people who love me. I have people who support me. I have food. I have a lodging. All of us can say the same. But beloved, when we're dwelling in something like the fear of the unknown, we forget what we have today. And we forget about God's promises. He will never break them. We forget about the promises that he gave his son. We forget about what the promises were with Jesus. What Jesus says about you right now is that he's interceding for you 24-7. We forget about the power that is given us through the Holy Spirit. And we forget that he, if we allowed him, will work this out in us. It is a guarantee, beloved. And I want to just go on and open the, the scriptures to Mark 4. So go to Mark 4, verses 35 to 41. You have it here on the slide, but if you can't see it, go to your Bibles. Mark 4, 35, 41. It, is, it seems to be something that keeps on coming back all week, and I wasn't even going to bring this today, but as I was just sharing uh, a word with my husband this morning, and I kept on going back to that, and he just stopped me, and he said, I really think you need to share what God was showing you about this. And so that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to just share a little bit of, and it goes along with, what am I dwelling in? What am I going to continue in? What am I resting in? It says here, that day when evening came, he said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. 
There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up, and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples who woke up said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the, way, then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. This is our God. This is what he says. It is amazing that we do the same thing in our days, is that they were told the very first thing before going into the boat, he says, let us go to the other side. He was giving them a guarantee. The boat's going to get to the other side. We're going to get to the other side. They heard this, but it went right over their head. They walked into the boat. The storm came. They forgot Jesus was in the boat with them. And not only that, he had the authority to quiet. Now, you know that they, they had seen Jesus do miracles. They heard him teach. They understood this man had actually brought people who were dead and resurrected them. He had the power. So what caused the disciples to be so afraid, even in the midst of having Jesus in the boat with them? I think it goes back down to belief. It goes back down to what they were dwelling and continuing and what they were resting in. They were resting in that boat to keep them alive, but the, the boat was getting swamped. And so there's something that we had to learn. Now, I looked at the commentary, uh, where's the commentary, and he says this. Jesus did not stop the calming of the elements, for the greatest danger was not, uh, was not the wind or the waves. This is what he says. He says, it was the unbelief in the hearts of the disciples. Our greatest problems are within us, not around us. Are you getting this? They are within us, not around us. Now, the word unbelief is a lack or absence of belief. Now, there are two words that go around quite, uh, uh, we use them quite often. We use the word disbelief. Disbelief is on an unpreparedness, an inability to believe. But unbelief, it is a absence or a rejection of truth, a rejection of belief. Quite the difference between the two. This explains why Jesus gently rebuked them and asked them, do you still have no faith? Do you still not have any belief, any truth? They had heard him teach the word and had even seen him perform miracles, and yet they still had no faith. It was their unbelief that caused their fear. Are you hearing this? It was, it's our unbelief that causes our fear. And their fear made them question whether Jesus really cared. It made them question, does Jesus really care? They asked, do you not care that we perish? We must be aware of the heart of unbelief. And that's why when we make God, the Most High, our dwelling place. When we continue in that truth, when we rest, we're supported by that truth. We become a person not susceptible to outside influence or disturbances. God wants to be our refuge in this time of trouble. Refuge means a place of shelter, even though dangers are around us. He is our refuge. He is our place of trust. And that we need to ask ourselves, where are we finding our trust? Where are we putting our eyes and our focus in? God doesn't break his promises. We are truly gloriously free today of all anxiety and fear if we choose to dwell in the shadow of the Almighty. He is our refuge, and so many of us, we do the same thing that disciples have done. We hear all of these things, and we forget. He's already told us, I'm going to bring you across. I'm going to get you across this storm. And we need to go back to being certain and to dwell in those places one more time. 
We need to choose to dwell either in the uncertainty or the certainty of who God is. We need to choose to live in the unknown or the known of who God says he is and what Jesus has done for us. We need to remember that he wants us to rest in his grace. That means he wants us, he wants to give us the ability to go forward in this, to actually to stand in grace, to stand in truth. He wants us to continue to do all that he's asking us to do. Beloved, I have to tell you, I gave a short video on you know, how do we reset our minds? And, and sometimes we get so overwhelmed. Crises do that. We're in a crisis. And we need to understand. We need to be real. We need to, you know, go back to their structures. I mean, we have to continue doing our routines and our schedules. We have to continue going forward and believing, doing our quiet time with God and going back to truth so that we can dwell on the right things when the day comes to us. We know that in a crisis, we will have our moments. And this is what I want to finish off with. We will have our moments where we fail, where we actually embrace things we shouldn't be embracing, where we're going to be just like the disciples, even know that Jesus is with us. We will forget that he is, and we'll go forward in our frustrations, in our iter- 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 I can't even say that word, anger. Uh, we'll go forward in our fears and anxiety. So we need to remember that we are a work in progress. We are a work in progress. And our last truth of identity that we, we are going to finish off this series with is that I am unfinished. You are unfinished, and it's okay. Christ has saved us, and he has begun a relationship with us. And he says that he's going to be committed to the very end to our holiness. He will walk with us through life. He will cause us to grow in him, and he will cause us to learn what it is to be a true child of God. We need to come back to what we saw in Psalm 91. We know that we have put our refuge in all the wrong places, and because of that, we are very greatly disturbed. And so we're asking, God is asking us today, go back to what you know. Go back to what he's already showed you, and you need to take heart. Philippians 1, 6 says this, I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. We are unfinished, but God himself is moving us towards completion. He has not forgotten you. He has not forgotten the stressors, your concerns, and your burdens, but you have a choice where you will dwell. You could dwell in the shadow of the Almighty, or you can dwell in the shadows of uncertainty. That will be your choice. God does not want you to live with fear, doubt, and insecurity in these days. All that needs to be accomplished has already been done in Jesus Christ. When he said this on the cross, it is finished, he meant it. Whatever you will need to walk through this storm, he said, I've already given it to you. If you slip, he's got you. If you fail, he has, you, he has your back. When you are going through uncertainty, you got to remember he's on the scene. He, you can be assured and secure in that. That's why he wants his children to live this way, to live by faith and not by sight. It is a gift that God has given us, and this tremendous gift of grace is that he's asking you to dwell and rest in something so much bigger than yourself. God can and he will be with you. Your assurance and security are based on God's ability to make and keep his promise. He is perfect. He is loving. He is forgiving. He does not lie. He doesn't get moved. He is who he says he is. And we need to go back to those truths over and over and over again. We are assured that through this crisis, he's going to walk us through. You are you have a new identity, and that new identity makes all the difference in how you are going to move and what you're going to be placing your fortress in. If you want to grow close to Christ, you need to know who you are, and you need to know whose you are. Today, I know who I am in Christ, and I know that I belong to God. And I need to remind myself of that all day long 
There is no better place to be. Remember what dwell means? It is to dwell in this place, to continue, to stay, to be supported by that truth. And I want to finish with this last verse here. It is verse Psalm, uh, Psalm 27, 4 and 5, which says this. One thing have I asked of the Lord, that will I seek after him, that I may dwell, there's that word dwell again, in the house of the Lord all, all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to inquire of his temple. For he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble, and he will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will lift me high upon a rock. That is what God is telling you today. That is what he wants you to continue in, to live in those truths. Truly, your identity is unshakable because of the God that's behind it. Your God is an unshakable God, and you can have an assured confidence that when he says something, therefore he's going to keep it. And so he says to us today that no matter what, if you dwell in the house of the Lord, that means just in his presence, just going after him, seeking him, calling out to him, being real, and just going back to the promises that he showed you. Mine is that moment I will fight for you. All you need to do is be still. I think still being still is probably the hardest thing we have to do in the weeks to come. Being still in the knowledge that God is who he says he is, that Jesus did what he said he would do, and that the Holy Spirit will do what he was sent to do, to bring us to all truth, to guide us and direct us, and to empower us no matter what we go through. So the question before you today, do you have peace? Are you standing firmly in grace? Galatians 1.5 says, stand in the freedom that Christ has given you. We need to stand in the right place, beloved. And if you don't know the Jesus that I'm talking about today, without Jesus, you can't get in to the shelter. Only through the work of the Son can we actually reside under the shadow of the Almighty. And when you accept him and what he has done on the cross and in the, resur in the, the resurrection, which he rose again, and now he's seated at the right hand, and all things are under him. And because all things are under him, I have all that I need this day. But so do you. So you need to make a choice today to believe, not to be like the disciples who had heard the truth and the promises, but to believe that God is with you in the boat, and he will always be with you. I want to thank you for coming and joining us today. And if you have any questions, if you want us to pray for you, if there's anything that you desire, please don't be afraid to call us. And as we finish off, I want to listen to a song called Oh My Soul called, uh, from Casting Crowns. And listen to it as you actually look at this verse and ponder what you heard today. May God go with you. May he keep you. May you reside and dwell in the right place this week. And I will see you again this week and next week on our online services. Thank you.
'Cause you're not alone. 